So um, I'll introduce our speaker. Tadashi Tokieda is a professor of mathematics at Stanford. He grew up as a painter in Japan, became a classical philologist, not to be confused with philosopher in French, <laughs> and having earned a PhD in topology from Princeton, has been an applied mathematician in England and the US. He is active in outreach in the developing world, especially via the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, and also offers a score of videos of surprising experiments on the YouTube channel Number Five. He delivered public lectures at two consecutive international mathematical international congresses of mathematicians in 2018 and then 2022. Uh, so let's welcome. One of the most dangerous grounds on which to stand is between the horde of high energy physicists and their wine and cheese. <laughs> An even more perilous ground is between the lectures of two great scientific heroes, Dan Fried and Stephen Schenker. If I presume to stand on that ground, it is in order to honor and celebrate another third, no less great hero, indeed Hiroshi Oguri-san, Oguri-sensei. So ladies and gentlemen, I shall not detain you for long. I will start with something innocuous that you all know that your heads are, but don't worry. Please humor me for 90 seconds or so, I shall get to something less familiar. I take a strip of paper, and then all of you think I'm going to make a maybe, maybe strip, but I shall not. I just go <laughs> without any twist. So it is a straight strip. And I propose to cut it along the center line. And you all know what's going to happen. I cut, 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 cut all the way around. I'm about to finish cutting. And when I cut, it splits into two rings. That's very good. I shall leave them on the ground. Next, as you are expecting, I shall take another strip and then give it one twist. When I say one twist to make it a movie strip, let's introduce convention. I shall call this 180 degree or pi flip one twist, twist by one. I'm making a, some kind of fuss about this because many mathematicians for good reason prefer to call it the half twist. But for us, in order to simplify the reference language, it's going to be one twist and that's the null strip. So that's what it is. And many of you, in fact, all of you in this room um, played with movie strips in their childhood and probably cut it along the center line because many um, places in popular literature say so. That's interesting. So let's do that. I shall cut it, slice it along the center line. all the way. And whereas in the previous case of a straight strip, straight loop, it decomposes into two disjointed loops. In this case, it stays connected. So far so, many of you have seen this, but then how many twists does this resulting object have? I have shown this to many leading topologists around the world, and some of them, in fact, many of them, fall flat on their faces about this. How many twists? But we shall come back to that. That is not germane to the main part of the talk, but we shall come back to it. Now, what I propose to do is to glue some of those strips or twisted things at right angles to each other, like so, and then slice the resulting object along the center line and then see what happens. There are, in principle, four combinations. One of them is straight against straight. The next one is straight against Mobius, and the third one is Mobius against Mobius. And my organizers will say, ah, Tadashi cannot do arithmetic because there are only three of them. But when you glue Mobius against Mobius, it is possible to glue them with the same chirality or opposite chiralities. Yeah. The Greek word here is the etymology for handedness, that's chiral, and this hand and this hand are congruent but cannot be superposed um, with, a, with the orientation preserving map. So there are four possibilities. The simplest one then is straight against straight. So I shall now do that. I take one strip and I close that into a loop without any twist. And then another one and close it into a loop. This is the configuration, which I now shall cut along the center lines. Okay, what will happen? In the case of a single untwisted strip, is split into two pieces. So maybe in this case, I don't know. Um, but the, uh, sooner or later, because I glue them at the right angles to each other, I have to make a cross cut somewhere here. Yeah. 
But in order to make the suspense last, I shall leave the cross cut until the end. So I shall cut almost all the way around, but not <laughs> quite. And then start cutting the other piece and go around almost all the way around. So this is what we are about to finish cutting. That is straight against straight with only the cross cut left. So now what will happen, let's do that. Chonk, chonk, and chonk. And what emerges is a flat square. <laughs> that is rather surprising. Those of you who are over-educated in topology will know that the up to homotopy type, what we have produced is a punctured torus. And it is, of course, a bouquet of two circles. But that's topological. That's indeed a homotopy type. This is an actual geometry, in fact, made of paper. And it is a flat square. But let's press on. Next up in complexity is straight against the movies. This time, something interesting must is bound to happen because in addition to this straight bit, I am now introducing a non-trivial twist in the form of the movie strip, which is glued at right angles to the previous one. So now I'm going to twist it and then close. This is straight, this is movie glued at right angles to each other. Now, what will happen if I cut it along the center line? Well, in other words, well, the previous case was very surprising. It was a flat square, but you know, this time something else will happen. And how will this extra twist that I introduced into the system be reflected in the final result? That is what we shall be interested in. So we shall start cutting almost all the way around, but as before, I'll leave the cross cut up until the end, almost all the way around. And then the movies part. Okay, you all have your conjectures about what will happen. <laughs> cut, 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 cut. By the way, in case you think this is all pointless, indeed it kind of is, but the main part of the show, <laughs> main part of the show is not coming up yet. I shall wake you up when, it, when we get to the good bit. So this is what we are about to finish cutting. That was the straight part and that was the movies part. An introduction of a twist, how shall it be reflected in the final result? That's what we're interested in. And now I finish cutting chunk, chunk, chunk. What is going to be the fate of my this? This time, what emerges is again a flat square. I would call this disappointingly interesting, or maybe interestingly disappointing. <laughs> what is this? I mean, what happened to the movie strip that I introduced? I mean, it disappeared into thin air, literally. I mean, is, is it the case that we're always going to get the flat square each time? What's the point of this show anyway? Now, <laughs> so, if I may say so, I should cut to the chase. Let's do movies against movies with opposite Chiralities. Did you hear me say that? Opposite chiralities. I'm insisting on this because I showed this to a friend of mine, a great mathematician whose name can be revealed for a small fee. And he went to an international congress and then showed this to, in my absence, to thousands of people in the audience. And I told him, well, you have to make the opposite chiralities. Otherwise, something else happens. He said, oh, yes, yes, I'm a great mathematician. I know this. <laughs> Always rehearse, I said. Otherwise, boards will punish you. Oh, yes, yes, I, I don't have to rehearse because this is pure mathematics. And then he forgot. And something else happened. But anyway, so we shall do movies against movies. We do that at right angles to each other, but with opposite chiralities. In order to do this then, you have to exercise your short-term memory. And I say you, because you are going to show this off to friends and family later on, but when you perform, always rehearse. And in particular, at this stage, when I'm about to close one of these strips, I have to remember, register and remember what I'm doing. Let's say I twist it in the clockwise direction or right-handed screw motion and then close to make, make a movie strip. And I have to remember this for several seconds because when I come to the next closure, I come to this point, wait a second, what have you just done? <laughs> what was it? Wow. Ah, thank you. Some people fortunately remember. So I have to give it a counter clockwise on the other side of the Atlantic, anti-clockwise, left-handed screw motion, and then close that into a movie strip. And this is the beautiful paper structure, um, sculpture um, with two movie strips of all four seat priorities glued at the right angles to each other. So what will happen when I cut this along the center? I would like to tell you that this is rather nice 
And there's a reason why, by the way, in case you have been asleep, this is the time to wake up, um, why this is a present. But also, it's a piece of applied mathematics, and I shall explain why it's a piece of applied mathematics. But in the meantime, there should be some kind of theme song playing while I'm doing this. I'm cutting along each of those, slicing along each of those strips. Okay, I go, I go, I go, and then go, go, go. Okay, all, almost all the way around, almost all the way around. Okay. Do you see, I'm about to finish cutting two mobile strips of opposite chiralities, glued at right angles to each other. I cut both of these along their respective center lines. Now, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, nothing up here, nothing up here. <laughs> I'm going to finish cutting, making that final crop cut. And what emerges is a pair of linked hearts. Mm -hmm which you will see in a moment here. Sorry. Yeah. Oops. What's this? Here, 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 here. Here, link parts. Maybe I should put it on the other side. <laughs> there is a frame in which to put them. And amazingly, two rings to go. <laughs> Those of us in sciences are oh a lot to Ogrisan for not only his many publications, but also for links, human links indeed that he created among us, from which we benefit every day of our working lives. So this is proffered uh, as a token of cordial thanks, shall I say, from one of those modest scientists in his death. And in East Asia, the tradition is to wear something red, you know, to celebrate birthdays. So many happy returns. Thank you. That's the main part of the show. However, you're not going to be released anytime so soon. Um, you know, we had something like this before, movie strip that has been cut along the center line and how many twists there are. Let's take a vote, shall we? on how many twists there. And then you are going to say belatedly, but what do you mean by a twist? I defined for you what we meant by a twist. A 180 degree of pi flip is counted as one. So how many copies of that flip does this thing have? Who thinks it has only zero twist? Well, of course it's twisted. One twist? Who thinks two? Three? Good. Four? Five? 365? Okay. And uh, now you can count the number of connected components and then convince yourself that it should be the result should be oriented, orientable, so two twists, even number of twists, and so on. But they are the best reasons for believing that there should be two twists. And here's how. Please watch what I'm doing. Let's say that this is a strip of paper, which I bring over here and then twist and then glue back in front. That's a movie twist. Okay. And imagine this strip of the paper be divided by a center line, like a you know, driveway, and into two, two bits. Okay. And start driving on the left. And you see seeing from your side. If you start driving, and if there were no twist, you would just come back and finish on the left, and that's it. But because there is a twist, this mysterious region is passed through, you come back not on the left where you started, but on the right. Ah, nothing doing, so I have to keep driving. And then on the other side, I pass to the other side, and then come back to the left and finish. Okay, this shows that in fact the entire thing is connected already, congratulations, but then also that I made two circuits in order to cover the whole thing, and each circuit passes through this mysterious region in the background, which picks up uh, that twist, so two circuits, each circuit picks up one twist, so there should be two twists, all right, this is a quasi proof, but in order to check by experiment for even in high energy physics, Sometimes we can do experiments. Um, I would like to ask my assistant, Juan, if you can please. Come. <laughs> and if you can hold this with your fingers and don't move until further. No, 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 just one. one, one. Don't move until further. Notice. Okay. So in this configuration, I don't know if you can see on the camera. Um, yes. So in the upper half, there's no twist. I concentrated all the twists of this system in the lower half over here. Do you agree? Now, I shall, so please don't move until further notice. I'm going to apply the indescribable violence of cutting this upper half and then start untwisting this remainder. How many untwists do I have to apply in order to make it straight? That's the number of untwists twist that this used to have. Okay, so let's do one twist, two twists, 
ah, despite that quasi truth, it's still twisted. Oh. Three twists, a little bit, and four twists, and now it's straight. Oh. We shall first. <laughs> He'll come back in a moment. <laughs> so where did those two extra twists come from? Two extra twists. We thought we had the best reasons for believing that we had two twists, but four twists. This has to do with the following, shall I say naive conjecture? I take the freedom of um, using that word because I used to have this conjecture too. That you know, if you measure the torsion of, let's say, a Frenet frame or something that you chase along the or the strip, it's very tempting to imagine that if you integrate the torsion all the way around the circuit, well, you get some integral and which is equal to the global number of twists, yes? So this is corroborated by the simplest example where if the frame is straight up all over the place, so there is no zero local twist, then you go around, if it goes zero, it's still zero. And indeed it is not twisted at all. But now imagine going around yourself twice, like so. Wrap yourself around yourself to us. Here, the paper is pretty much straight all over the place, so the torsion is zero. But when I tried to undo it, oh. it actually has a twist. And how many twists? One, two twists. So it's not true, unfortunately, but interestingly, that the integral of the torsion is equal to global number twist. But there is a, a discrete correction term which comes from how many times you were wrapped around yourself, or if you like, the degree of the covering. And that each time you go around, you introduce two twists. So because you made two circuits, yeah, so that's an extra circuit. So two, which we knew and, and understood, plus that two discrete correction gives you four. And that is why. And with an image like that, you can do a lot of things. And in particular, let's try to picture and understand why when we did straight against straight, we had this flat square. So my fact reminded among us, it is as surprising actually as the linked hearts, if not so romantic. Yeah. So let's try to understand. By understanding, I mean, I want us to become able to run a movie in, my, in our minds. So I have to say again, oh yes, yes, of course it has to be a flat square. That's what understanding for me means. So let's do that. I'm going to do straight against straight. Again, the same experiment as before. And of course we know, yes, yes, what's going to happen. It's going to be a flat square, but this time we want to become able to visualize why, why it's happening. So here it is, okay? I said earlier something silly such as, well, theatrics, you know, you know make the suspense last, I'm going to leave the prospect until then, but there is a good way and bad way of doing anything in mathematics and theoretical physics. Good way here, the winner turns out to be to cut all the way around one of the pieces. And then they'll remain for us the task of cutting along the other piece, but we shall do that later on. So here, let's go all the way around. And when I cut all the way around one of the straight pieces, what happens is that you get like something like this, a pair of handcuffs connected by a straight piece, straight because there's no twist anywhere. And you see, at this point, you can probably guess what's going to happen, picture what's going to happen when I cut along the center, the remaining piece. But I shall do that anyway, because I will need it later on. So here is what it is. And when I do that, I shall step away from the camera and show you what it is. You open it into a flat square like this. So you can now run the movie in your mind, can't you? So it used to be, excuse me, like so, like this. It got cut and it opened. So that's why it is a flat square. More interesting, however, is why by introducing a, a movie's twist into one of the components, we don't see that in the result, it disappears. It's still a flat square. Why is that? Let's understand it again. So I make another piece and then another one. At this time, I shall make it into a movie strip. And the winner, yet once again, turns out to be to cut along the center line of the straight one. So I'm going to cut all the way along the straight one. And when I open, what the, I get is something like this. A pair of handcuffs connected by a twisted belt. Yes, because that's the twist that I introduced as a movie twist. So because the ends are free, it becomes something like that. It's a belt with handcuffs on opposite sides of the belt. 
rather on the same side. At this stage, we can all generalize. If you have an even number twist, zero is an even number, you get handcuffs on the same side of the belt, or odd number on the opposite side of the belt. You can always undo it. So it's one or the other, but please one come forward. <laughs> This time, however, it's slightly harder to imagine what happens when I cut along the remaining cut. But before I do so, I'm going to play a magic trick. So, on, if you can hold the top, please. Can you see, can all of you see this? Okay, now I'm going to play a magic trick. I turn, grab the bottom, I turn it on. And it keeps exactly the same thing. Thank you very much. It's thanks to Professor Malutena's magical touch that this happens. <laughs> so it's exactly the same. So of course, when you cut it, you are going to get the same thing because you're cutting the same thing. Yeah, you can turn over and under, over, under, and so on. Okay. But this is the natural result that you get if I don't apply that magical trick of turning over. So let's try to cut along the center line anyway and see what happens. This time. Whereas before, the result of cutting opened very quickly into a flat square, this time it doesn't. There's a twist at the bottom, but I can shake that twist into flat. And this shaking over or you know, turning over, you can do it before or after it's the same thing. So now we know all why it is a flat square. It is much harder to understand why this is happening, but let me blah, blah, blah for about two minutes. You see, what we are doing is an interesting thing. You know, you are gluing a sequence of movie strips to each other, yes? Well, in algebraic geometry, people tend to do this over complex numbers, over finite fields and so on, but let's do it over real numbers. There's an operation called blow up, which is used to resolve singularities and so forth. But the simplest way to think about it is if you have some space and you have a point and you want to blow up at the point, you drill out a ball from there and glue back in a projective space, yeah? So in this case, what you do is to blow up at the point, say the real plane, and projective, real projective plane has the property that you know you're looking at all the lines that go through the center. But when you have a line like this, by rotating that by, by pi, not by two pi, already at pi, you come back to the same line, which means that it's a movie strip. In other words, what I'm saying is that if you take the blow up of the real, real plane and look at the tubular neighborhood of the uh, exceptional divisor, don't worry if you don't know what that is, um, that tubular neighborhood is non other than movie strip. So what we are doing is just a su succession of blow ups. As such, this is the kind of thing that algebraic geometers and algebraic topology, you know, ingest for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And yet, none of us sees it coming. Why? Because since Gauss, who stands at the junction of the um, 18th and 19th centuries, just as uh, Ogrisan stands at the junction of the 20th and 21st centuries. Um, you know, we have been learning that the, the adult thing to do is to think intrinsically. You think of a uh, theorem I break you. You know, you want, you want to think about it. And extrinsic geometry, how the manifold happens to be embedded in ambient space, that's sort of childish stuff. But here, everything is about the extrinsic topology. Yes, so this linkage, which is so romantic, is, has to do with the embedding of this thing inside ambient R3. So I'm sort of propagating the idea that, in fact, extrinsic properties are actually worthy of consideration. And this tends to be a blind spot for those of us who grew up on the diet of intrinsic geometry. Now, I'm very, very glad that there's a little bit of time left and somebody asks the question, what about gluing two movie strips of the same kind of chirality? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> We shall do this. I have to warn you, however, to the wise people who ask this, that it's not going to be very romantic. So let's remember that I'm now taking the clockwise twist in order to make a movie strip, and then the other one has to be clockwise as well. Okay, clockwise. And this is the paper sculpture, which I shall now proceed to slice along the mid and centralize it. Well, you don't need to be told that this is a very symmetric object. Indeed, there's actually a special symmetry. If I hold it like this and turn it over like that, it comes back exactly the position. So it's that Z, Z mod two symmetry. I'm tempted to say Z mod two, but anyway, Z mod two symmetry. And also cutting along the center line is a very symmetric operation. I'm not distinguishing between that left and right. Okay. And so it's a symmetric operation on a symmetric object. Now, there's a belief, indeed a conviction throughout sciences, that if you apply a symmetric operation to a symmetric situation, outcomes are 
an asymmetric result. Okay, okay, there are some cases of instability and seas of uh, instability, you know, asymmetry which blows up and so on. But this is, to borrow a former expression, it's pure mathematics. There is absolutely no room for asymmetry. It is a symmetric operation. So let's see what happens when I cut this movies against movies of the same, the fourth and last case, hierarchy, which is cut along the center lines. I forgot to say why this was a piece of applied mathematics. So I'm going to tell you that when I'm about to finish cutting this. So this is what we are about to finish cutting. But in the meantime, let's go back to this. Applied mathematics. Well, you know, traditionally, when people speak of applications of mathematics, of course, we think about the physics, the oldest bad fellow, strange one too, for centuries, and which enriched mathematics and vice versa. And we are living, of course, in the golden age of that, where physics um, applies to mathematics. So I, I, I will to all you, of you people for doing this. And nowadays, of course, there are applications of computer science, the economics, and the biology, what have you. And, and so on. But this is a piece of applied mathematics because um, I worked, as the introduction kindly said, at the um, African Institute for Mathematical Sciences Ames in near Cape Town. And also I worked in, um, I helped to run and found and run a uh, nursery school for HIV positive babies in a slum next to Cape Town and so forth. So I went, used to go to Cape Town quite often. And there I met obviously the right lady, right one. So I thought this is it. So I sprang this on her. And now we are married and we have two children. So this <laughs> application of mathematics. Of course, you have to be absolutely sure what you wish for. Now, let's finish <laughs> let, Let's finish that. This was, if you don't remember, movies against movies with the same parity, cut along the same center lines. So it is a symmetric operation on symmetric objects. Now I finish cutting. And this is the last bit of the show. Thank you very much for your um, patience, ladies and gentlemen. You are now going to see what's going to happen when I finish cutting. I told you that this is going to be not romantic at all. Actually, it's very sad because ooh, 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 they separate. <laughs> but then there is some surprise in this too. One of the pieces that emerged is like a boat. Um, my condition facetiously call it digon or tugon because it has two corners. Yeah? But the other one is also tugon, but it's twisted in space and no amount of manipulation will make it untwisted. So, out of a symmetric operation applied to a symmetric object, there came two asymmetric pieces. What is going to come? Thank you very much. Is that all twist or eight twist? The other one. So you have, one has no twist. Oh, the, uh, oh the, these two. Yes, yes. Ah, so the question was, um, Professor Ogri asks, was that four twists, eight twists, what, how many twists? So I know you are not only a colleague, you're a teacher of mine, so I shall not be presumptuous as to say this, but when, for example, in a public lecture or somebody um, from outside science asks this question, excellent question indeed, wonderful question, you know, a question that leads you to research, however modest. My answer is, well, this is science, and in fact, it's, Table of science. So you have as much access to nature as I do. <laughs> yeah. that's, so that's my homework. That's really, that's really the job of doing that. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if not, let's thank Professor Cook for being the time. Thank mm -hmm. you.